Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Yara, and you're listening to the DIY Business Magic Podcast. So this Monday, I want to talk about something that's emotional for many of us, which is pricing our offerings. Before I go into it, just a last reminder that I'm running a free online workshop tomorrow all about business planning for 2019. So that's really exciting. I think it's going to be great people. So far, more than 100 have signed up. Um, I'll share tips and resources and inspirations and stories. You get to ask me anything and I'll share some journaling prompts. So the link to sign up for that is in the show notes as always. And um, if you're listening to this in the future, check the link out anyway because under that same page I'm always offering workshops that you can sign up for. Cool, okay, so let's dive in. Before I start, I really want to say that pricing is something that's super individual. There's really no one that can tell you exactly how you should uh, price your offerings and so I'm really not trying to do that. I'm just offering some thoughts and you can take whatever feels good to you and then leave the rest. And I also want to say say that I think what feels right right really change over time and it's something that I'm re- revisiting at least once a year. Um, so for example, the prices for my web design offerings and packages have increased over the years. And that's because I gained more experience, I, I built my uh, portfolio, I've added services within that package that seemed to make sense to, to me. And then on the other hand, my prices uh, for courses that I'm offering have actually decreased, which is unusual, but it works for me. So when I first started teaching online courses two and a half years ago, I charged more because I expected to sell less and I had a certain, um, you know, I had certain costs around production and I needed to make that back. And I also just didn't have the confidence yet to experiment with different alternative business models like running a Patreon or offering sliding scales. Um, so yeah, all this to say, prices are not static. You can allow yourself to revisit this and see what feels good a year from now. And that's totally cool. So I want to start by inviting you to just ask yourself how you're currently feeling about your pricing. How you're feeling about communicating on social media, or on your website, what you're asking for. How are you feeling about communicating that in real life, saying to someone's face, this is what it costs to work with me or this is how much my products are maybe there's guilt that's coming up maybe there's some shame maybe there's some resentment because you're feeling that you're underpricing yourself and maybe you're upset when people ask for discounts maybe you feel like you're being taken advantage of maybe you're feeling super happy and confident about your prices and you're feeling good about what you're charging and I think yeah, I just want to say all these feelings are valid. I think pricing under capitalism is something that's really, really hard. And I don't know any business owner that hasn't struggled with this at some point in their business. Um, so yeah, don't be hard on yourself. The next first step that I want to invite you to think about is calculating your costs in a really holistic way. So of course we can look at um, the costs for each product that we're offering in very specific ways but it's also good to think more holistically about the energy cost that we are putting into it, the development of ideas, maybe the amount of training we need to be offering what we're offering and that just gives us a better bigger picture of our pricing structure. So this is like a business 101 recap um, but I think it's important because not many of us have been taught how to price our services and how, how to think about um, production costs and all that stuff. So I want to recap that really briefly. They're fixed costs um, and they'll be independent from the amount of humans, units you're offering of your product. So that's, when I say product, I mean both services and physical products. It doesn't really matter. So for example, the rent that you pay for your workplace uh, workplace might be $300 and you'll be paying that $300 each month regardless of how many units or hours of your time or products you're selling. And so that's a fixed cost. And then you have variable costs and these are related to the amount of products you're selling. So for example, if you're a herbalist, you might be paying those $300 for your studio space where you're producing your stuff and working. Um... And then you might have costs per product like bottles and 
oils and alcohol and vinegar and plant material that you want to be working with. So maybe you can calculate, okay, you're paying $3 per bottle and then you're paying $300 in rent and you're budgeting or you're estimating that you're going to be selling 100 bottles each month. So for each of those bottles, your cost will be $6. $3 are um, the fixed material costs and then um, $3 are the fraction of the studio rent that you're paying. Of course, that's super simplified. I know there'll be more stuff that goes into this. There will be time for admin and marketing that you want to pay yourself for. And there might be a software cost as well. But this is just to give you an idea of the difference between variable and fixed costs and how it makes sense to budget that. So I would really recommend that you sit down and whether, you know, regardless of what you're offering, even if it's like an, an, a service that you offer on the internet, but think about your fixed cost and list them in an Excel sheet and then think about the costs that go into each unit that you're selling, be that an hour of your time or a product that you are selling. And, and if you haven't done that in the past, please don't beat yourself up. Um, I think many, many business owners I know are not doing this. And and again, that's totally normal because we are kind of learning as we're going along. This is not something that we've been taught, but it is super useful to really understand how you, you know, what cost you're coming up against as you're offering your products. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, some of us might run online businesses in a very kind of slim way I'd say um, I for example have uh, software costs or generally you know generally my overhead for my business is less than $150 a month and that's fixed costs and then on top of that I sp spend quite a of money on education and travel and that will vary throughout the year of course and it will also vary a lot from year to year and then the next question I want to invite you to ask yourself is how much you want to pay yourself um, and that's really, really hard. I know for sure. Um, I really struggle with this question. But if this feels hard, maybe expand that question to asking, what do you need in order to feel safe, supported and respected? And I'm saying respected very intentionally here because I think when we're feeling resentful, when we're feeling people are overstepping our boundaries by asking for discounts or we're underpricing ourselves out of insecurity, it can sometimes feel like our time is being disrespected and that's painful. Um, and, and then make a list of any other costs that you might not currently be budgeting for. So that could be stuff like shipping or storage. Even if you are, say, if you run your business from your own home and you have a home office and then you're devoting some storage to your office, uh, to, sorry, to your business, that's taking away from your home space. And even if you're not, you know, thinking about your rent or splitting it up in a particular way, that's an energetic expense because you're giving some of your private space up. And whether or not you'll find a way to kind of bring that into your pricing or not, it's good to just write that down. And then also think about how much time you're spending each week on marketing and administration and social media and outreach and PR. It's so easy to forget these hours. And I think especially those of us who are offering um, services at an hourly rate sometimes feel some resistance around the hourly rate that we actually want to charge because it seems outrageous possibly compared to someone who's in employment. But the, an important thing to remember here is that people that are employed get sick pay, they get holiday pay, and they don't do any unpaid time for admin or marketing or social media the way most small business owners do. So you just have to factor that in and remember that your hourly rate is just really not comparable to um, what someone is earning in employment. Another thing that I want to... <laughs> offer you to consider which is a little bit more complex and really tricky is the idea that I personally believe that my time is not worth more than anyone else's and neither is my energy and I really hold that I can really really believe that's true but I also need to acknowledge that under capitalism it's incredibly difficult to really live, live that belief you know and to find a way to trade with other people that feels fair and good and that reflects that value that I have and a common argument, for example, is that education means that 
People get to charge more because they are more specialized, they're highly trained, they've invested in their education. And I'd say to that that actually I think education is a beautiful privilege. I'm really, really feeling super lucky for the time that I got to spend in education in my life. Not all my education was great or a good experience or has shaped me in positive ways even. But overall, I'm just feeling really lucky that I got to go to university. And of course, there's also the reality that some many of us have student loans and debt and and I have to repay these. And in some ways, we have to budget that into a living cost now. Um, so like I said, I do believe this. And at the same time, I'm totally aware that under capitalism, it is hard to live that belief. Um, but see how that feels for you. Like, do you think your time is more is worth more than someone else's? And if so, why? Um, and if not, why is that? And then the next question I want to ask you is, who do you want to offer something to? So something I feel that's often overlooked in small business marketing or pricing in general is class. And and I just noticed that sometimes when we offer a program, say that costs a hundred or two hundred dollars, we are out. We're making a decision, conscious or unconscious, um, to outprice working class folks. And of course, that you know, that's a very broad statement. I don't mean to say that whenever you charge a hundred dollars for something, you're effectively outpricing working class people. That's not true. Um, you know, people can afford different things at different stages in their lives um, for all kinds of reasons. But generally, I would say, I think it's a shame that we're not talking about this. That class is playing a very important role in how we're pricing. And sometimes we're making decisions that are outpricing all kinds of people that we actually really care about. And this is really not to guilt trip you in any way, because there might be really good reasons for why you're charging what you're charging, and I don't want to challenge you in that. I just want to invite you to consider that you can make that decision more conscious, and even if that's uncomfortable for now, it might in the long run actually give you more depth and clarity around how you want to be of service in the world. Um, so, so I want to share a couple of tools that you can utilize, for example, if you're feeling stuck in this place where you know that there's a certain amount that you'd like to charge that feels good because it feels like it's honoring your time, um, the energy you put into education and all the love that you pour into what you're offering um, and at the same time that makes your work more accessible. So one option would be sliding scales and within sliding scales there's also very many ways that you can do this. So one way would be you give people very clear instructions on where they need to place themselves on the scale. You could say if you earn x amount of money you can pay this, if you um, earn y amount of money then you pay this. And then you can either ask for proof or you can ask people to just decide for themselves and you can decide to trust them. Um, and again, that's a totally personal decision. There's no right or wrong way. It's just about thinking about these different options that we have. Another way of doing it is to say, look, this is the base level price. Here, I'm charging $100 for this thing um, because that's that's what it costs and, you know, this is honoring my time and la 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 I think that's what it wor what it's worth but I'm also offering three spots at a sliding scale and you can pay whatever you want for that um, and so if maybe you want to experiment with sliding scales but you're feeling unsure about offering your whole offering on a sliding scale that might be a nice way of of kind of like dipping your toes into that water and see how that feels and maybe it will feel really good and maybe it won't feel so good but just you know consider giving it a try um, another option would be offering scholarships and again within that there's different options you can ask people to send in an application for a scholarship or you can randomly kind of draw someone from a hat um, you can also ask people that are able to pay the full price to maybe consider paying a little bit more so that you can offer more scholarships so they wouldn't cost you anything which is interesting um, another option would be offering DIY courses or learning resources. So for example, if you're offering a service that people could possibly teach themselves the way I do, you could offer learning materials at a cheaper rate. So I know, for example, that my web design packages are not affordable for very many people. 
and I wish it wasn't that way but I just put a lot of energy into each of the websites I make so I need to you know I need to be sure that I'm still paying my rent and so that's why I started teaching courses on web design and branding and I'm making them available at a very low cost for my Patreon and that really works for me. So I do offer a couple of sliding scale websites each year um, but beyond that I'm offering people the option to teach themselves and that feels good to me. Another idea would be running a blog, offering online workshops or offering learning resources like blog, uh, blogs or podcasts um, like this one. My experience with sliding scales is really positive and I know that's really not the case for everyone. So I've heard other people who felt that was really tricky and hard to navigate. I think for me, I'm pretty lucky that my services are online. So, um, you know, if, for example, I had travel costs or if I was hosting a retreat and and I felt that not enough people were, f were paying a high enough price to make it viable, I would feel resentful, of course. With the online programs that I'm offering on a sliding scale, it doesn't cost me anything if someone, you know, s pays the minimum rate. And I'm I'm honestly totally happy with that. Like I love, I love it when people pay the minimum price on a Patreon because I know I've reached more people. I made it more accessible, and this person might have not been able to sign up if it hadn't been available at this price. Um, and like I said, it doesn't cost me anything. It's more people in the program. Sure, there's a bit more space holding and answering questions and more people in the live webinars, but that feels okay and doable. And it might be different if you're offering something that's more labor-intensive for sure. I want to talk a little bit about online courses as well and how to price them because that's really tricky and many people kind of feel stuck on where to begin with this. So again, I don't have a good answer. I just have some questions that I want to offer to you. Um, so the first thing is actually more of an observation. I often see that courses about making money have incredibly inflated prices because, you know, teaching someone how to make more money is... Well, it, it's, rel it's comparably easier to market, I would argue, because most people want to earn more money. And if you can sell them the idea that you can teach them how to do that, which you may be able to do, I'm not saying that's impossible, then that is something that you can charge good money for because it's a no-brainer. If, if someone, you know, charges me $500 and teaches me how to make 2000 then that's a great investment. Um... I've taken a course like this myself and I've learned a ton from it. However, I also have really mixed feelings and a lot of questions around how inflated this industry has become and how it sometimes almost feels like a Ponzi scheme where you can really only justify spending that much on a course if you then walk away and teach the next group of people that much money for this kind of course. And that has worked really well for a lot of people. I can't deny that, but I think there must be a better way of sharing skills online and spreading knowledge and ideas and information so I'm excited about thinking about these things. So on a more practical level I would look at the cost of production of your course and the cost of running it. So the production might be things like you needing to invest in some lighting or a microphone, maybe you have um, tech setup costs like software that you need to shoot your videos um, and then there'll be ongoing costs like the time that you might spend in a Facebook group answering questions or maybe you will run live webinars that you need to budget preparation and actual running time for. Um, maybe you'll have ongoing software costs like a teachable platform. I used a free version um, but some you know for some people it's right to to upgrade that and so again map all of that out see what your actual costs are make a good estimate of how many students you think you'll bring in and again I know that's super tricky and that's something that you're going to have to learn about over time because you're getting to know your audience and it's just very hard in the beginning um, and then think about how much you want to spend uh, how much you want to pay yourself in the process and um, I would also say ask yourself how much this course will be value you know how much value this course will have to your students but again that's a super abstract question and and it really depends and I think it's also interesting to think about how we value different things in different areas of our lives so for example uh, many people will agree that a business course that teaches you how 
to make money is very valuable whereas maybe a course that teaches you how to look better better look after your body and create herbal potions might by the general public be perceived to be less valuable though arguably i would say our health and well-being is super important and you know but anyway let's not go down that rabbit hole that's just a thought um I think that online courses can be an credi incredible, beautiful way to share your skills and enable people to learn something that you're really excited about. And there's many ways in which you can make that very accessible. I don't want to say, though, that pricing is the only concern when it comes to accessibility. Um, so, for example, I know that I'm currently not offering any transcripts in my courses, and that's something that I'd really like to do. So right now, I can't justify hiring someone to do these for me with what I'm making and what I'm putting into these courses but in the long term I know it will make them more accessible so I would really love to do that and then finally I want to talk a little bit about discounts and what they can mean um, mainly I just want to say you know there's so much pressure on so small business owners and I saw that in particular around Black Friday and Cyber Monday to discount ourselves and I really just want to remind you that you're running a business because you want to play by your own rules so maybe it feels good to offer a discount and case in that case yay you know shout it from the rooftops but maybe it doesn't and that's totally fine too maybe you just feel good about where your prices currently are and you just don't want to offer a discount and I think that's totally valid I think something that's really good for people to hear people that are interested in your work is what are you putting in and how you're making these decisions so for example share that you're spending a certain amount of money each month on software or share that you're spending a certain amount of hours each week on things like social media or admin or customer care because people really forget and they can't know because you know not everyone has experience being a freelancer or running a small business and so I think it's really positive to be transparent around pricing and to say things like hey you know this is what feels right for me right now I know this is complicated because we all live in a capitalism I would like to my work to be unconditionally um, accessible but I also really need to honor my time and my energy and I have bills to pay and so this is the compromise that I'm making, this is what I'm offering you um, and these are my boundaries and this is what feels good to me. So yeah, I hope that some of these uh, thoughts that I've shared have maybe allowed you to find a little bit more clarity or feel into your own understanding of this and if you have any questions at all, I would love to hear from you. Thank you.